guys, welcome to my channel. I believe in redemption, of course. I believe in second chance. You have the opportunity to start new. You don't have to wait until you graduate. You don't have to wait until you start a family. Whether it's good or bad, you can decide now. There you have it, redemption love. Hi. Hi. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi guys, my name is Tamika. I am a registered nurse, a doula, a health enthusiast, and a budding life coach. Oh, that's awesome. Those are a lot of titles. What um, actually made you go into nursing? You know, at the time, I went into nursing, I'm going to be just quite honest, because I felt it was a solid career, good money, but I've been a nurse now for about 13 years, and now I see more of the reason why I went into nursing. It's pretty much, you know, part of me to help people, to help heal people, and just to be that type of person. So, really, nursing is part of me. It's part of who I am. You say you've been a nurse for 13 years yeah. as far as your journey into nursing? Absolutely. Um, so when I finished high school, I was not one of those people that knew exactly what they wanted to do right out of high school. I thought I wanted to do something in the healthcare, uh, so I went for like my prerequisites first for like pharmacy. I'm kind of tired of like the chemistry. I didn't like chemistry that much and um, I had a couple friends who were nurses and they were like, Try nursing, it's very um, When I went to nursing school, though, it was quite a challenge. Um, I always say, like, nursing is like a mini medical school. Me too. I'm just going to tell you. Um, okay, pause. What so you're hearing in the background school, are students like passing in, by, and, and you may see me fidget a bit, you know, but it's my first time in front of the camera. Exams to do, and it's not just passing an exam, you have to pass an exam with a certain percentage, and you can't fail more than a number of times. And it's just very tedious. Um, there was a point where I felt like I was just stuck in the middle. I was like too far in to finish, to see myself finishing, and then, uh, you know, I couldn't stop. So it's challenging. But I knew that I was going to make it, and I just had some encouraging people. All of us were in the same boat. Okay, so this is very important, and it was a lesson that I had to learn, especially when you're in your most fragile self and you're removing yourself from a place of doubt and moving into a new area or arena in your life. Um, you want to be surrounded by individuals you look up to could only help the situation. Can't do any harm. <laughs> or in the same boat. How important is it to have friends that encourage you and to support you and you don't have much personal time for yourself? Um, I would say that's going to be like the most important thing ever. What you're surrounded by is going to affect you whether you are aware of it or not. So if you are surrounded, if you're, if you're the only one in your group of friends or whatnot doing this and everyone else is just kind of doing what they want to do and not having to go to nursing school, then it's not going to work. I mean, case in point, when I was in nursing school, I was in a sorority and Prior to when nursing school really got tough, I was like wanting to go out and hang out and do all the sorority things you do when you're an undergrad. Um, but I saw that I had to cut that out. I couldn't party anymore. I couldn't do all of that. So it is really important to have people who are focused on achieving getting out of school or focused on studying because you can't hang out with the people who want to party when you have an exam and when you have clinicals. This is not going to work. And it's going to be really important. I think most of the time you will find someone who is, you know, people in a group. And it's good to study in groups. You want to rally each other and keep everyone together. It's going to keep everyone motivated. Great, great, great answer. So, okay, so fast forward a few mm -hmm. years later, you've been a nurse for 13 years. Mm -hmm. You have all this great experience. Mm -hmm. Where are you now with nursing? With nursing. 
Yeah. Um, so first I want to say nursing is a very good career. You can do a lot of things with it, and I'm very thankful for it. So like she was saying, I've been a nurse for 13 years now, almost 14, which is crazy. can't believe it. Um, so I've been a nurse for so long, and it's taken me a lot of places. Um, I uh, am originally from Houston, but with nursing, I was able to do what's called travel nursing. I went to New York, and I've been there for the last 10 years. Uh, my last place where I'm currently working is the Cancer Center um, in New York City. And up on that time, I kind of saw that I wanted to do more. I saw that healthcare was turning more into a, um, like a business. And it's just hard to really give people all of your care when you have business components to fill out and do. And so I took a little time away from nursing to like health and fitness and I kind of had a spiritual journey where I saw that I wanted to do a lot more of inspiring things for the world and help people who weren't able to help themselves. I started doing a lot of volunteering and um, I just saw that that just kind of helped me find my purpose which was to inspire people and to help people and to help people live healthy lives but nursing is like my core and that's why I really help people because I really help people in their most vulnerable state you know someone's in pain or their kid is sick or they are sick or family so it's really been like a full circle that's come about so. oh that's awesome so unfortunately yes Healthcare has turned into somewhat of a business. Your experience at the cancer hospital, um, is this the ultimate factor that led you to believe in wellness and fitness? And yeah, um, what I saw a lot was happening. I had to like kind of take a broad step back and look at a big picture. If you look in our world today, we are given a lot of fear-based things you know the news is full of negativity and fear everything's bleak um, you know there's a lot of our foods that we eat aren't good for us and it's really hard to navigate around it even if you do try it's hard to really eat healthy so the foods we eat the things that we put into our minds kind of keep our illness you know it brings illness to a big uh, point where a lot of people are getting sick a lot of people are developing cancer and things like that and what I learned is that you could change your mind and you can kind of change your health outlook if you believe you're healthy then overall you start feeling healthy um, it's kind of a deep way to look at things but I just kind of saw my patients and I kind of could see the fear and instead of just going to treat the patient and doing just these mechanical things I really try to get to the patients you know being that works. I wish I could do like a study on that, but you know, like being positive around someone and bringing that positive energy does help them feel better. I've seen it. Um, I'll have a co-worker and we're working in the same area and her patients are in disarray and pain and she's running around, but my patients are nice and calm. Give them, you know, empathy, which is something that we're lacking in today's world anyway. But it's more so in health, we have to, as a provider, we have to give people, you know, a lot of empathy and compassion and not just look at it as a job. I know a lot of nurses who just got into nursing just for a job and money, and that's not really good when you're helping people. It's going now. Okay, so those are two very great points. Empathy and the energy you bring to your patients. Aspects have you sort of gravitated towards as far as your career is concerned? Um, well, I've gravitated away from the hospital setting. And so I was really getting annoyed with the hospital setting because as a nurse, Behind the scenes, they have you do 20 million things, all this charting and typing and checking to get there for your patients so you can do these things so you won't get documented and all this, right? So then I decided to um, kind of explore the aspect of working as a doula, um, which is a support person for women uh, during labor and be there for a woman when she's in labor. Just be there and help her through this moment. Um, it was just allowing me to give my spiritual component to her, give her all of what I had inside 
to her without having to worry about um, meeting the needs of the hospital and you know all that stuff and um, it was really great it was some of the most uh, hardest work I've done because I had given all of myself in ways that I never did as a nurse like which is what I love but I see that's what I really want to do it's it's worthy it's worth going to school for it's worth all the blood sweat and tears I fought for so so time waits for no one and it's essential that you move forward and you start from where you are. There's no such thing as it being too late. Does time have a factor in factor in what you're going to do next in your career? Well, that's a good question. You know, because I think in our world today, as we get older, um, we think we've missed a deadline or something. You know, we're not in this whatever we're you know box we supposedly have for ourselves at a certain age and we feel it's over and i want to squash that myth because that's absolutely not true and i feel like it's the older we get the wiser we get anyway so sometimes as you get older you're you're, you're making better decisions and you're doing things um in a better way and our society makes us feel like if we haven't done something by the time you're 30 this and that i'm like you're so young. You have your whole life ahead. And it doesn't matter if you're. I mean, I made a life change. It was start. I'm almost forty. <laughs> I made a life change. <laughs> I made a life change when I was starting around thirty-five. I was like, okay, something's you know in here eating me up. I want to do something different. And now that I'm this age, I'm like, this is the perfect age. And I read in a book, and people who created these amazing things in life didn't do it until they were like after the age of 35 or 40 absolutely you know <laughs> so don't get too caught up in your age and thinking you have to be this young person to do things i mean we all know when we were 21 you know what am i going to what you were doing you know i'm so i feel so much wiser now like yes i'm wise and yeah i know but don't get caught up in that and i hate that society makes us feel that way especially women we're not doing something at this age, and we're just as tough as out. That's so false. Just always believe that you can start at any time, even if you're 60, 70, whatever. You're still alive and you're still on earth. Do it. Right? Amen. <laughs> you maybe share your Instagram account? Oh, yes. My Instagram is Tambre, T A M B R E A. And uh, I'm on Facebook, that's Tamika Nicole. T A M E K A Nicole N I C O L E. I'm going to um, go ahead and place the links below. So please click below, and we're going to follow Tamika's journey, and we're going to see how she incorporates the love she has found within herself to extend out to her patient. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you for tuning in. I know, I know, I know. I was a little nervous in the beginning and a little apprehensive about the camera. Um, but we're going to work on it. We're going to work on it. Please like and subscribe below um, so you won't miss a beat.